Ever wondered what Cushing's syndrome is and how it impacts the body? This complex endocrine disorder is marked by the body's overproduction of cortisol, often referred to as the stress hormone. It's a rare condition, affecting approximately 2 to 3 per million people each year. But don't let its rarity fool you, Cushing's syndrome can have serious health implications. Understanding this condition is crucial not only for those affected but also for medical professionals, students and anyone interested in human health. With knowledge comes power, the power to diagnose, to treat and to manage this condition effectively. It also helps us empathize with those living with Cushing's syndrome, appreciating the challenges they face daily. From the overactive adrenal glands to the excess cortisol coursing through the veins, Cushing's syndrome is a fascinating exploration of the human body's intricate hormonal balance. So let's dive into the causes, symptoms and treatments of this fascinating and complex condition. First, it's essential to distinguish between Cushing's disease and Cushing's syndrome. While they may sound similar, there's a critical difference. Cushing's syndrome is an umbrella term for conditions caused by high cortisol levels in the body. On the other hand, Cushing's disease is a specific type of Cushing's syndrome, where the excess cortisol results from an overproduction of ACTH. So, what is ACT? ACTH, or adrenocorticotropic hormone, is produced by the pituitary gland, a pea-sized organ located at the base of your brain. Usually, ACTH stimulates the adrenal glands to produce just the right amount of cortisol, a vital hormone that helps your body respond to stress maintain cardiovascular function, and regulate metabolism. But in Cushing's disease, often due to a benign pituitary adenoma, the pituitary gland goes into overdrive, producing too much axth. This, in turn, triggers the adrenal glands to release excessive amounts of cortisol, causing the symptoms associated with Cushing's syndrome. Now that we've clarified that, let's explore other causes of Cushing's syndrome. Cushing's syndrome can arise from several sources, not just the pituitary gland. We've already discussed Cushing's disease, where the pituitary gland overproduces ACTH, often due to a benign pituitary adenoma. But let's delve into other causes of this syndrome. First up is the ectopic ACT syndrome. Here, the ACTH hormone, which typically comes from the pituitary gland, is produced by non-pituitary tumors instead. These tumors can be located anywhere in the body, often in the lungs, and they pump out ACEH, leading to an overproduction of cortisol. This is one of the less common causes of Cushing syndrome, but certainly not one to be overlooked. Next on our list are adrenal tumors. These are growths that occur right on the adrenal glands, which are located above the kidneys. These tumors can result in what we call autonomous cortisol secretion. This means that the adrenal glands start producing cortisol on their own without requiring ACTH stimulation. The excess cortisol then leads to the development of Cushing syndrome. The last cause we'll discuss is iatrogenic, which is a fancy way of saying it's induced unintentionally by medical treatment. This primarily happens due to long-term glucocorticoid therapy. Glucocorticoids are medications that mimic the effects of naturally occurring cortisol and are used to treat a wide range of diseases, including asthma, lupus, and rheumatoid arthritis. But when used for extended periods, they can lead to Cushing's syndrome. So whether it's a rogue ACTH-producing tumor, an adrenal growth, or simply the side effect of necessary medication, there are multiple ways Cushing's syndrome can develop. It's not just about the pituitary gland, each cause presents a unique challenge requiring a tailored approach to treatment, which we'll explore later. With the causes laid out, let's move on to the symptoms. Cushing's syndrome presents with a unique set of symptoms. Many of these symptoms are physical, and they can be quite noticeable. Central obesity is a common one, where fat accumulates around the abdomen while the arms and legs remain relatively thin. Then there's facial rounding, often described as a moon face, due to fat deposits on the cheeks and at the back of the neck giving a buffalo hump appearance. The skin isn't spared either. It becomes thin and fragile, leading to easy bruising. Striae, or what we often call stretch marks, can also develop, 
especially around the abdomen, thighs and breasts. These aren't your ordinary stretch marks though. They're usually wider and their color can range from purple to pink. Muscle weakness is another symptom that can affect everyday life. It's not just about feeling tired. People with Cushing syndrome can find it challenging to climb stairs or get up from a low seated position. And let's not forget the psychological effects. Depression is common in people with Cushing syndrome. They may feel down, lose interest in activities they once enjoyed, or even have thoughts of suicide. Anxiety can also be a symptom with feelings of tension, worry, and physical changes like rapid heart rate. Recognizing these symptoms is the first step towards diagnosis. It's important to remember that these symptoms can also be associated with other conditions, so a professional medical evaluation is necessary for a correct diagnosis. Diagnosing Cushing's syndrome involves a series of tests. To unravel this medical mystery, doctors typically start with cortisol tests. Cortisol, the body's main stress hormone, is often in overdrive in individuals with Cushing syndrome. So doctors will measure cortisol levels in the urine, saliva, or blood to look for excess amounts. Urine tests are usually conducted over a 24-hour period, while saliva tests are typically done at night when cortisol levels are naturally lower. If they're high, it's a clue that something might be amiss. Blood tests, on the other hand, can provide an immediate snapshot of cortisol levels at any given moment. However, cortisol tests are only the first piece of the puzzle. If these tests indicate high cortisol levels, doctors will then use imaging tests like CT scans or MRIs to look for possible tumors on the adrenal or pituitary glands. These tiny growths can be the culprits behind the overproduction of cortisol. But here's the thing. Not all Cushing's syndrome cases are created equal. Therefore, to pinpoint the exact cause, doctors often use a technique known as differential diagnosis. This involves measuring AKTH levels. If AKTH levels are high, it indicates that the pituitary gland is the source of the problem. If they're low, the cause might be a tumor elsewhere in the body. Once diagnosed, what are the treatment options? Let's find out. Treatment for Cushing's syndrome depends on its cause. As we delve into the various options available, it's important to remember that every patient is unique and treatment plans should be tailored accordingly. Let's start with pituitary adenomas, the most common cause of Cushing's disease. Here, transphenoidal surgery is often the first line of treatment. This involves the surgeon reaching the pituitary gland through the nose and sinuses to remove the tumor. It's a delicate procedure performed by skilled neurosurgeons, and it can successfully cure many cases of Cushing's disease. Next, for ectopic ACTH syndrome and adrenal tumors, the primary treatment is to remove the tumor causing the excess cortisol. This could mean surgery to remove a lung tumor, for instance, or an adrenal gland. In some cases, if the tumor can't be removed, doctors may recommend medications to control cortisol production or block its effects. Now, what about iatrogenic Cushing syndrome? This is caused by long-term use of glucocorticoids, medications often used to treat conditions like asthma and arthritis. Here, the treatment involves gradually reducing the dosage of these medications under the close supervision of a healthcare provider. This tapering process is essential to allow the body to resume its own production of cortisol. But what if surgery isn't an option or hasn't been successful well, there are medications that can help. Drugs like ketoconazole, for instance, can control overproduction of cortisol and mitigate symptoms. There are also newer medications on the horizon with clinical trials underway to test their effectiveness. Remember though, it's not just about treating the physical symptoms. Cushing's syndrome can have significant psychological impacts from depression to anxiety. That's why comprehensive care often includes psychological support, whether that's counseling, medication, or both. In the end, treating Cushing's syndrome is a multidimensional process involving surgical intervention, medication, and psychological support. It's about finding the right balance for each individual. 
to not only treat the disease, but also to improve quality of life. Living with Cushing syndrome requires more than just medical treatment. It's about a holistic approach to health, one that addresses both the physical and emotional aspects of the condition. Coping with Cushing syndrome extends beyond the physical. Living with this condition demands a comprehensive approach, addressing the emotional toll it takes alongside managing the physical symptoms. A robust support network, including medical professionals, therapists, and loved ones, is invaluable. Psychological counseling can help navigate the emotional turbulence, while lifestyle management aids in mitigating physical discomfort. Regular exercise, a balanced diet, and proper sleep are key components in this journey. Remember, you're not alone on this path. Let's conclude with a health tip. A healthy lifestyle can support endocrine health and reduce complications. Regular exercise, for instance, helps regulate hormone production and maintain a healthy weight. A balanced diet, rich in nutrients, aids in overall body function, including the endocrine system. Managing stress is equally important. Chronic stress can disrupt hormonal balance, leading to various health issues. Incorporating mindful practices like meditation or yoga could prove beneficial. Remember, your health is in your hands. That's our health tip for the day. Understanding Cushing's syndrome is vital for effective management and treatment. We've journeyed through the causes, from pituitary adenomas to adrenal tumors and even iatrogenic causes. We've delved into the symptoms, diagnosis and treatment options, revealing the complexities of this condition. Living with Cushing syndrome is not easy, but with the right support and understanding, it can be managed. Remember, maintaining a healthy lifestyle is key in supporting endocrine health and minimizing complications. Stay healthy and take care. Thanks for watching. We hope that you found our deep dive into Cushing syndrome insightful. If you did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We're always striving to bring you more valuable health information. Sharing is caring. So feel free to spread the knowledge by sharing this video with others. Remember, understanding is the first step to managing health conditions effectively. Until next time, stay informed and stay healthy.